We hope to bring you some information that is new and provocative and will help you think more clearly about the madness that is surrounding most of us on this planet. There are some who have gone into a Zen state and just don't care, and maybe they're the lucky ones, I don't know. Here's a, a story that you gotta just got to laugh at this stuff, I, I guess, I or cry. Yahoo News is reporting it, and it. Uh, I think I ran it yesterday. President, I hate to say president, the alleged president, Barack Obama, promised in an interview broadcast late Monday that his decision, his decision, to arm Syrian rebels, rebels, does not mean the United States is taking sides. Now, this is a quote. Does not mean the United States is taking sides in a religious war, end quote. That's what this creep is calling the Zionist mercenary slaughter of over 100,000 Syrians in that country, clearly a takeover attempt by the international Zionist bankster cartel headquartered in the city of London. That's where it all traces back. It's all about money and control and greater Israel. Obama went on to say to PBS's Charlie Rose that the NSA revelations by Ed Snowden were just a ruckus. Just a ruckus. No big deal. He said, if you're a U.S. person, an odd construct, isn't it? If you're a U.S. person, then NSA is not listening to your phone calls and it's not targeting your emails unless it's getting an individualized court order, end quote. Right. The lies just keep pouring out. Unbelievable. He went on to say there are two programs that were revealed by Mr. Snowden, allegedly revealed by him since there's a criminal investigation taking place, and they caused all the ruckus, he said to Rose. Just a ruckus. No big deal, folks. No big deal at all. Gerald Salenti is with us once a month in his busy schedule, and we always welcome this time greatly and uh, have wonderful conversations. All right, my friend, welcome back. And, uh, I mean, it's it's despicable and getting worse. Well, you're right. It's despicable and getting worse because you also left out the wonderful new Supreme Court ruling. Oh, I was getting there, but go ahead. Yeah. Tell it. Lay it I, on us. It's important. Well, you don't have Fifth Amendment rights anymore. The right to remain silent. Now the re- right, right to remain silent can mean that you're guilty. Yeah, before he, absolutely. Fifth yeah, Amendment because, is now equated with essential guilt, folks. That's so. right. Yeah. So, you know, this, um, you get the Trends Journal. Uh, back thank a you. year ago. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, spring issue 2012. The, the, we had a, uh, the, the cover art. It was very, people got very upset about it. It was next train to Auschwitz, all aboard, kiss those calories goodbye. Fabulous cover. Remember that one with all of the stock car, the, the, the cars, cattle the US, cars, made right. in USA, the cattle cars, yeah. yep, 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 and people with "I love Bieber" World Wrestling Federation T-shirts, pants hanging down, getting on board. Well, in that you know, on in that issue, we did a story on page twenty-six called "Big Bro," without the public really noticing or caring enough to notice. Obama's 2012 had become Orwell's 1984. Big Brother had arrogated to himself full power to do as he pleased. So what? What was the big deal? Does anyone really care? Why should anybody have to know about the NDAA and the NDRP executive order? We go on to pay. Washington was everywhere and affected everything. And we outline in chapter and verse, actually, Mm -hmm. about uh, what this fellow Snowden has just talked about over a year later. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's what the Trends Journal is famous for. You're right on it. You've been doing this for two decades now. And, um, you know, it's right there. I mean, here's here's a story from um, U.S. Eases Rule on Use of Data on Americans. Mm Mm-hmm. The Obama administration has moved to relax restrictions on how counterterrorism analysts may retrieve, store, and search information about Americans gathered by government agencies 
for purposes other than national security threats. The guidelines will lengthen to five years from 180 days, the amount of time the center can retain private information about Americans when there is no suspicion that they are tied to terrorism. Intelligence officials said intelligence officials, right? I love that line. The guidelines are also expected to result in the center making more copies of entire databases, mm-hmm. and quote, data mining them, mm-hmm. using complex algorithms to search the patterns that could indicate a threat. Again, remember, this is um, you know, over a year ago. Yeah. These aren't just so, keyword searches, folks. It's way beyond that. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know, we, we go on to write, and out Orwellian Orwell, whose fictional big brother convinced the populace he had to watch them in order to protect the national security, mm-hmm. the real-life Holder Obama guidelines for the National Counterterrorism Center permitted the government to, quote, retrieve, store, and search information about Americans for purposes other than national security threats. It's wow. right there. You had it you all. Know, we, we wrote about this stuff. Yeah. And you know what I've come to the conclusion? Two of them. The first one is that this is perfectly logical in a fascist state. And fascism, of course, is, the, and I know people are going to send me emails and saying, no, this isn't what Mussolini said. They're wrong. Mussolini said the merger of state and corporate powers is fascism. And too big to fail is the beginning of the indoctrinated fascist state. Oh, absolutely. In the United yeah. States. You're you bailing out yeah. businesses. And again, once again, Eric Calder, our attorney general, he said that the reason he didn't prosecute the too big to jails in the financial sector was cause, fear that it might cause to destabilize the economies, the words to that effect. Mm-hmm. So now what we have, Jeff, is the pure understanding here that this isn't really about counterterrorism or intelligence or even watching us. It's, that's only part of it. The other part of it is who is Big Brother? And according to everything that I've read, Big Brother are the military contractors, the ones that are hired to do these jobs. And according to a story in the Financial Times, we're spending $80 billion. Hey, folks out there in Detroit where it's rotting away, East St. Louis, Camden, Trenton, and, and a city near you. Mm-hmm. $80 billion on so-called counterterrorism. And there are, check the number, 150,000, 150,000 private contractors doing the work. So all this really is... 150,000 in this country? Yes. Wow. According to the Financial Times article. Mm-hmm. Let's not and, leave out, let's not leave out, Gerald, excuse me, this is important, let's not leave out universities on grants from many of these military industrial complexes to do the real dirty work oh, they're involved and, too oh, of course and the the other aspect of this is for example when you just look at the, the one of the companies uh, uh i love the name booze <laughs> oh booze allen booze <laughs> allen hamilton right yeah right <laughs> Booze, Amelie. the guy, Mitch McConnell, who's the head of it, the CEO, mm-hmm. son of a gun. He was also the National Security Agency head under Bill Slick Willie Clinton from yep. 1992 to 1996. Round and around they go. Exactly, the revolving door. The other guy, Clapper, I love his name, man. But he, he and he and a picture of him and, and Dick Cheney is enough for, for a... Uh, for a Marvel comic book special anytime, you know. Or a series. Guys. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're yeah. going to go through the break, Brett. Uh, keep going, Joe. This is, but uh, anyway, so when you're looking at this, this is more of a money-making scheme than anything else, just as the military-industrial complex is. It's another scheme for people to get rich off the government. Yeah. So when you look and you read about how they pushed for this whole National Security Agency and all this intelligence, on and on and on. It's a money-making scheme. In the meantime, as in in any good fascist state, they keep us in line. So that's what's really going on as I see it here. Shouldn't we say military-industrial-congressional complex now? 
Well, you see, you know, in the last Trends Journal, I wrote about it, that, that it's really, it's two groups. It, 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 there are two mafias. You know, they, they're the, the mafia families. One is the military-industrial complex, and the other are the money junkies. And all the, all the politicians are, are the wise guys. That's all. They're the there wise you go. guys for the mafia. There you go. Perfect place to hang them out. I like that. Yeah. So they, they're not, you know, they're not a mafia on their own. They're just the low lives, you know. They'll, they'll just, they just do what they're told. So what we're looking at now, of course, we're talking about Syria. You were talking about. I'd like to read you a quote. Former French Foreign Minister Roland Dumas, during an interview with the French parliamentary TV network LCB, recounted that he was in Britain on, a matters, on matters before the outbreak of violence in Syria. Quote, mm-hmm. I met with top British officials who confessed to me that they were preparing something big in Syria, he said. He continued, this was in Britain, not in America. Britain mm-hmm. was organized. Okay, welcome back. I was thinking today that we only get to spend, and we're fortunate to have any time with this man. He is so busy. Gerald is with us 12 times a year. And, of course, we have him on YouTube and on many other programs. But it goes by so quickly. Here it is July, and then August, and then it'll just roll on out. We have uh, interesting news stories. Uh, I'm going to mention a couple of them here. But I, I like what you just said a few minutes ago, Gerald, about money junkies and the wise guys. It's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a time for terms like that, and they, they fit so appropriately. How you been? Uh, I've been very... <laughs> yes, <savvy>. very, <laughs> I know you have. <laughs> oh, yes. So much is going on, and I have to tell you, I, I've never seen it so transparently empty uh, as it is right now. Boy, is I, mean, it? I mean, here in New York, for example, we have Anthony Weiner. Yeah, that was the guy, you know, that was... I remember him. You yeah. remember him. Sure. Uh, the, the congressman from New yeah. York. showing his, Yeah, you know, showing his crotch on uh, Facebook. Yeah. Another yeah. high-class guy. Yeah, real high-class guy. And then he's running for mayor of New York City. Oh, he is? Oh, yeah. Well, New York... Yeah. He's another wiener. Yes, yeah, I mean, you can't you can't make this up. No, no, and of course, no. it's one of these guys, you know, after he denies it, denies it, denies it, they said, oh, I'm, you know, I'm terribly sorry. I regret that I haven't lived. I mean, these are sociopaths. And so first they deny it, then they admit it, but they, they're sorry right. that they got caught. That's all they're sorry about. Well, they, if then, they actually verbalize the fact that they got caught and they pretend to be sorry, that's more than most of them do. Well, no, this is only after they nail him, after he, he's, he's denied it like a hundred times. Yeah, yeah, know? I got it. Yeah. And then, then the other one is Elliot Spitzer. Uh, he's, he's, well, he's not on CNN still? Elliot Spitzer now. He, he was the governor of New York. Yeah. Elliot Spitzer got caught with like a three or $5,000 a night hooker mm-hmm. in D.C. Mm-hmm. when he was governor. Mm-hmm. And of course, like the little wiener... The Spitzer, he denied it too. But here's the rub. <laughs> when Elliot, boy, his daddy, you know, the, you know, Elliot, you know, Elliot was born on third base and thought he hit a triple. <laughs> Elliot, Elliot's father, we, you know, is this mm-hmm. big real estate mogul, you know, uh-huh. in New yeah, York. Yeah. And, and anyway, so Elliot never worked a day in his life. All Elliot, all Elliot has learned to do is be this arrogant little boy. Oh, yeah. So Elliot gets caught with a hooker in, in D.C., right? And again, he denies it and denies it and denies it. And not only that, when he finally resigns as governor, he drags his old lady up onto the stage. 
Yeah, she had to win some, like a little boy. She had to win some medal for that. Uh, that well, how you know. disgusting! What a, I can imagine my 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 mother, my poor mother, may have so rest in peace. If my father ever asked her to do that, she'd say, "Why you?" <laughs> <laughs> you know? But anyway, no, here's actress, the rub: actress of the year, wife, yeah, he, wife he, actress of the year. But but here's the rub: <clears throat> Elliot, when he was governor, when he was mm-hmm. governor Spitzer, got it, passed the John Law. Oh, he so did. If, uh, this happens so often. He's so hypocrites. If a guy got caught with a hooker, then he'd get busted for it, mm-hmm. and he'd have to, you know, have a trial. But when Elliot gets busted with a $3,000 a night hooker, he gets to run for comptroller. And he gets nothing, you know, no charges. You know what I say, the word justice is just us. Oh, We're the sure. only ones that get nailed. They're spelling it wrong. It's J-U-S-T-U-S. Perfect. So that's what's going on in New York. Doesn't, and then doesn't, you lo- doesn't Elliot still have his CNN gig? Isn't he a celeb? No more, no more. They took him off because his ratings stunk so much, oh, oh. As, as the rest of them do as well. You know, they and all that's do. the other thing. Yeah. Hey, let's talk about Trayvon Martin. And if we don't talk about him, we could talk about Zimmerman. And if we don't talk about Zimmerman, we could talk about Trayvon Martin. Because, after all, why talk about what's going on in Egypt or what's going on in Cyprus or what's going on in Greece or what's going on in Syria or what's going on in Lebanon? And really, let's not talk about all the money that... Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates are dumping into Egypt to pump up the military. And don't mention a word. Please do not mention a word that it's against the law in the United States to support a country where there's just been a military coup. So we won't call it a military coup in Egypt, even though the military overthrew the government so that we the people could you don't have jobs you don't you you can't make uh, ends meet you can't pay the rent yeah, your mortgage poor. Uh-huh. we're going to we're going to still send them all of those F16s or F14s 16s, at a tune yeah. of of 1.5 billion dollars and they just sent four more today yep good for defense but Good let's for not, oh, it's our national interest, I tell you. And it's going to protect us from those terrorists. Vote for me. So this is the kind of things that are going on. And everybody is getting a free ride for immorality, death, and destruction. That's the new USSA. Boy, are they ever. You got it. Perfect. Uh, so much is going on, but, I mean, with the Trayvon case, I mean, I... How could we dare talk about anything else? That's CNN. CNN wonders why their ratings are in the gutter. Uh, you know, years ago, I don't know if you know this, but they were having ratings problems. must have been 10 years ago now. And they hired an expert to come in, a consultant to come in and straighten out CNN and push them back up in the numbers. The consultant was the former director of MTV. I remember. MTV. So they I brought remember, in... Yeah. I remember. I remember. I laughed and laughed and laughed. You know, in the early days, CNN used to be decent. And I used to be on it all the time. Yeah. yeah. I'd be on maybe three, four, five times a month. And then it became dumber and dumber and dumber. And all it is now is dumb. And, And again, the other news that's not making the news is this whole thing of, I love the word they come up with, tapering. That means they're going to stop dumping all this cheap dough into the economy. Mm-hmm. And, of course, the new news out yesterday was that uh, Osama Ben Bernanke, America's public enemy number one, the Fed chairman, said that, well, you know, we may still keep that tapering going along. So now we just <laughs> saw another boost in the, in the uh, stock market. And mm-hmm. then that's on also the, the boost today with the S&P hitting new highs. That's on the tails of another 360,000, 360,000 people applying for unemployment benefits last week. Yeah, and how many of those are married with one, two, or three kids? Lots of them. So you multiply that 300,000 in terms of people being directly impacted by that by, you know, 
let's say 2.5 to 3. So, and and you that's know. why you have some 48 million people on food stamps. And 50 million officially and formally determined to be poor in this country now. And so, but we've got to send those F-16s. You're exactly. Right. Oh, 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 we have drones now flying out of Niger. And, of course, everybody knows where Niger is. Mm-hmm. It's, they could, you give them a map right next they to could South Carolina, isn't it? Three seconds. Yeah, well, the, the average American couldn't even figure out what we were celebrating the 4th of July for. Uh, uh, I guess, guess what? I'm one of those Americans. I don't know why we're celebrating it either. The, the well, founding fathers would be turning in their grave. They are. You are correct. The average American, though, couldn't couldn't make the historical connection. So I mean, we got it's done. It's dumber than dumb, and it's heading. It's plummeting down, down, down. It's plummeting, and the other thing is, of I think it's some forty one percent of the forty one percent of the children born in the last year were born to single mothers. Wow. Yeah. In the whole country. Yes. That's pushing half, folks. Single yes. parent households. Yes, wow. and and you know what these? It, all you have to do is tune in MTV's "Pregnant at 16," and you can see the quality of much of what these children's families are going to be this, this and is where a, they're coming from. This is a sitcom. It, 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 unfortunately, it's not a sitcom. It's it's reality TV. Oh, I see. So uh-huh. what's happening is these kids are being born, a lot of them, to to unwed mothers with no education, mm-hmm. coming from nowhere, having going nothing, nowhere. and knowing nothing. And going nowhere. And going nowhere, yeah. because in this America, the American dream is dead. And it, what do you do? You get out of college, you're forty, fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 in debt, 50% of the jobs being created are in the sector of not needing a high school diploma. And this is a fact. Three-fifths of the jobs that were lost since the Great Recession hit in 2008 were middle-income paying jobs. Three-fifths of the jobs that have been created are low-income paying jobs. In other words, these are jobs that you cannot have a living wage on. And these are the people, the, ki- you, the, the you kids can't that are survive. having kids yeah, yeah, yeah. have no jobs. If they have, they have no jobs, if they have jobs, they're not paying anything. So this is the future of America. It's very bleak, and unless the course is changed, we can see where the trends are leading us. This is, uh, this is all true and, and worse. We really almost run out of words to describe it adequately. I've got... Sitting in front of me here is something real interesting. It's the 1912 eighth grade examination for the Bullitt County Schools. I don't know where Bullitt County is, B-U-L-L-I-T-T. And it starts out with the, the spelling quiz. And now this is eighth grade, all right? So imagine your average eighth grader given these words orally by the teachers to spell exaggerate conscious chandelier participate authentic bequeath diminish genuine vinegar incident monotony hyphen antecedent hideous relieve rhinoceros all right now I don't know how many kids passed this test, but I'm willing to bet that it was a very high percentage. Now, this today, the average eighth grader couldn't pass. I don't think they could pass that, the average one. Grammar. How many parts of speech are there? Define each one of them. Fat chance. Define proper noun, common noun. Name the proper ties of a noun. What is a personal pronoun? What properties have verbs? Geography, define longitude and latitude, name and give boundaries of five zones, the five zones. Tell what you know of the Gulf Stream. Locate the Erie Canal, what waters does it connect and why is it important? Locate the following countries which border each other, Turkey, Greece, Serbia, Montenegro, and Romania. 
You, you think the eighth grade kids today could pass this test? I don't think most Americans could pass that No. Test. No. <laughs> I'm talking about getting 50% right to pass, if that's what the curve was. And they'd be spelling know. fat, P-H-A-T. Yeah. And, and everything would be like, uh, like, like. Right. Like, uh, like. Oh, here's a question. That's right. There should be a question here. How many times can you use the word like in one paragraph? <laughs> yeah, like uh, how many? No, like how many times? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I forgot that. <laughs> yeah. De- define the fi- now. Here's this is now. Here more. Define the following forms of government: democracy, limited monarchy, absolute monarchy, republic, and give examples of each. These are eighth graders, right? They could. These are what the eighth grade kids could handle. Then they may have been somewhat physically shorter and didn't live as long as we do, but folks, they had brains and they were taught things. To what four governments are students in school subjected? To what four governments are students in school subjected? Name five county officers, not your county officials. Name and define the three branches of the federal government of the United States. Give three duties of the president. Oh, we could have fun with that, couldn't we? What is meant by the veto power? Name three rights given Congress by the Constitution and two rights denied Congress. Sure are eighth graders be all over that one. It goes on, it gets crazy. Well, you know you talked about that we may be living longer. The new study that just came out is that more seniors are living longer, but more are obese. So they're living longer, but they're not living healthier. And that was a major study that just came out from the National Institute of Health yesterday. Mm -hmm. So all of this talk about we're living longer as they keep promoting, yes, we're living longer, but we're not living healthier. And we don't even rank near any one of the the developed nations in terms of living long, healthy lives. And another another study I was just reading, this is is a brilliant one. We come in third in drinking the most soft drinks per capita. Fizzy drinks. Yeah. yeah. Fizzy brained Americans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 50% of the world's uh, people now are uh, formally listed as being overweight and obese. Overweight and obese. 50% of the world. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, 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 and I mean, it's no, no surprise why. Well, they're t- look fast at the food. junk that people are eating. I mean, like, and look at all this, you know, this corn fructose syrup and on and on and on. And, and and again, going back to this 41% of uh, the children being born into uh, unwed mothers' families, or unwed mothers, there are no families, the, uh, you the look at the physical condition of them. Mm-hmm. And then they're, of course, going to keep, continue to raise their children in the manner that they know. And, you know, when I was a young guy, you know, I grew up in the Bronx, and then we moved to Yonkers, and um, they used to have things like the CYO, and, you know, the YMCA was very active. And they had another one, PAL, the Police uh, Athletic League. Yeah. And they had all of these social programs. And then you go back to the Great Depression. You know, they were building all of these these social programs for the people. New York was filled. They Now, of course, there are apartment buildings on top of them. They had swimming pools everywhere. You know, the whole parklands were opening up all across the country. They had art programs, the great WPA art. So what I'm saying is is that yeah. at a time when the nation was going down, uh-huh. there were social programs in place to help lift them. Trying to lift the, the populace up, of course. What was the first, you may remember this, uh, folks, what was the first, when, when budgetary cutbacks forced the schools to begin to trim and rearrange oh, yeah. the, the curriculum, yeah. Yeah. what was the first thing to get yeah. cut? You yep. remember? Yep. It art was the music. thank you. Yep. Music history and then art. You yep. got it. Art and music. The soul of uh, what makes this species potentially better than any other species on the planet. And I use that word. Yeah, and then you hear these 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 politicians. I'll tell you what we need. We need more math and science. I tell you. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's always the same BS line. See, they took the soul out of. Uh, out they of took school. the soul out of the life of America. There is no soul here. It's gone. Right. It's gone. You know, I'm up here in Colonial Kingston, and the police put on this carnival, Coleman Brothers, 
So I went to check it out, you know, because I like looking to see what's going on, the kind of people go, the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And and so I got went there just when it was opening up. I wanted to check it out. The music was so hideous. It's not music. It's noise. It, it's noise. <laughs> There's no, you know, you know, I'll tell you a quick story. Um, uh, the famous guitarist, Les Paul. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows Les Paul. He mm-hmm. invented virtually the electric sound. Don't forget well, Mary he, Ford. Yep. Yeah. Well, Les Paul was a fan of mine. And he asked to meet me. Oh, nice. And, and so this is back, oh, about just before he died. I think he was about 94 at the time. He was playing at the Iridium down on 57th Street. Still playing City. at that age? Yeah, yeah. He was about 92, 93, around there. Oh, and he was hip as and sharp as could be. And he actually used to come up here to Kingston. He lived down in, uh, huh. uh, down near, near the Jersey, uh, New York line. But nice. he used to come up here to Kingston because IBM was up here. And he said to me, I used to go to this place, PT Surplus. He goes, and he puts his hand out, you know, to, 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 to about three feet off the ground. He said, I used to buy bags of tubes for $5 because IBM used to do all their testing and their equipment here. And then when they were finished with the testing, they'd sell the stuff off. And this place, PT Surplus, used to buy them up. He said, mm-hmm. he, used buy, he used to buy all the, these tubes, of, bags of tubes to, uh, you know, for, for his experiments. And he said, mm-hmm. and then they wised up. But anyway... We're talking about music, and uh, this is between sets. And we, we were in, we, he, we spent about 15 minutes together, and, and it's a great story. I'll, I'll cut it short, but we were talking about music and uh, you know, who do you like, and, blah, blah, blah. and uh, he said, you know, he said, and this is a guy, by the way, that had 20 million sellers. He had 20 songs that sold over a million. He said, I didn't know that. Yes, that's right. And... Oh. Uh, Matter of fact, the CD, the uh, CD, the, I had just, you know, as when they called me up to say he wanted to meet me, I rummaged through a bunch of my stuff and I found a 78 and it was Jingle Bells and uh, Silent Night. So nice. I, 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 I threw <laughs> yeah. it in another cover yeah. and yeah. I, I brought it down, I have it, you know, framed, he autographed it for me. And uh, huh, he goes to me, he said, he goes, oh, Jingle Bells, Silent Night. He said, I recorded this at Horn and Harduck. Do you know Horn, Horn and Hardart? Hmm. Well, this was the Automats. And Automat was a place with, with they were in New York oh, City. I know, I know what they are, sure. Yeah, we used to put the coins in and open yeah, the door and pull like out It's like a cafeteria stuff. with little doors. Right. So you said they wouldn't allow them to, uh, because it was unions in those days, they wouldn't allow them to record at the Paramount Studios. So, he says, so I says to the way to find me a, a quiet table. And he, you know, like late at night, he recorded this thing in Horn and Hardart. But anyway... We're talking about music, and you know he knows that I love it. We're going back and forth. He said, I tell musicians all the time, he said, but nobody listens to me. I keep telling them, play the melody. Play the melody. Mm. And so when you were talking about the music being just noise, that's all it is now. It's just noise. There is no melody. Noise with a cadence. Noise yeah, cadence, with a cadence. Cadence to make you go march. That's right. Yep, to mar- march to death. It, it gets the brain into lockstep with something, and that's training it. That's what they're doing. Get yep. that, get that brain, right. get that cadence. You're right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So uh, that's a really nice story about Les Paul. Yeah, yeah. I, I run. In, I have so many of these things that have happened in my life of the people that I meet, and um, you know, I, I told you the one about you know John Connolly. Him and yeah. his wife in front of the book depository. Mm-hmm. General Anthony Zinni at VMI. You know, one after another. Like Ronald Reagan, I spent about an hour and a half with him. I Is hired book, him actually yes. to do a gig when it, just two days before he was to announce that he was running for president uh, in 1976. You know? huh. So, yeah, I met I met a lot of people in, in my my field of you know, work. But but anyway, going back to what we were talking about, I, I was mentioning I went to this um, this carnival. And then I'm looking at the people, and again, I'm seeing a lot of young, very, very overweight or obese young oh, women. It's ugly. Yeah, it's ugly and I, and I just it, it's it's and and older people too. Everywhere I'm looking, I'm saying, what has happened? Mm-hmm. Now you cannot be, you can't be health that if you're not healthy, mm-hmm. how happy can you be? Well, not only that, but how active and functional can your your brain be? I mean, you're literally walking around in a stupor from the toxicity in the food, the calories, 
and all the other garbage, you're literally not feeling sharp. You're digesting. The blood is in your stomach, your digestive tract. You are mentally not sharp. People eat three meals a day. They don't need three meals a day. No. And God only knows what they eat, but if you're telling me that older Americans now are fat, and I haven't seen many lately, to tell you the truth, that's that's pretty scary. It's gotten to them, too. You'd think the older folks might have stayed thinner, but uh, not not apparently. No, 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 no. Yeah, and you yeah, see the says, little kids. It says, in addition to the number of people living longer, the percentage of seniors who are obese is also rising. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, the government researchers reported that 38% of people ages 65 and older were considered obese. Wow. Yeah, and that's oh, from 2009 to 2010. Well, it's up, it's up from that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, lose weight. A sedentary lifestyle of over 65. And, and check this out. From 1988 to 1994, it was 22%. From 22%, wow. it's gone to 38%. Now it's probably at 40%. Sure, that's a shocker. It is, and so there can be absolutely no health program, be it socialized medicine or privatized, where it's going to make any difference with a nation as unhealthy as it is. Oh, correct. 100% correct. There is, so, there's no way out of it. You're right. When I wrote Trends 2000, Jeff, back in 1996, mm -hmm. America was on the brink of spending... 14% of its GDP on health care. Now mm -hmm. it's over 16%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember that book, by the way. I remember when you brought it out. Yeah, there's some, but I look back at it and I, I, I yeah. you know, we didn't, of course we didn't get, you know, you know what my, my greatest failing was in that book? Mm. I was too optimistic. Isn't that funny? Yeah. I had that thought flash by me the other day, uh, even then. I remember was too what? optimistic. I remember, I remember the whole health food yeah. craze was just taking off. Yeah. And and people were optimistic with baby boomers like Clinton and Gore getting in there and it would be different and and um Oh, I know you were you were talking about Spitzer and we and the Wiener uh denying uh sex, denying sex. And you mentioned Clinton just now. Clinton denied sex. Uh he never he never admitted it, though. He just, he redefined sex. That's you remember right. that one? That's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember that. Oral sex isn't sex. No, of course and not. He, Everybody and he, knows and I, that. And, and quote, I didn't have sex with that woman, Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> I wonder how Monica's doing. And, and then, of course, his, his best line was, I smoked, but I didn't inhale. I hate I, these people. I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, 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 and Jimmy Carter, I lusted once in my life or something. Yeah. Yeah, there's another one. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, he is, this guy Only gets once, the, only once. Yeah, he gets the free ride of everybody. Bro, oh, nice Jimmy Carter, you know, the guy, that mm -hmm. peanut farmer, yeah. Simple the guy. guy. That, the Cub guy that, yeah, the guy that funded Al-Qaeda when they weren't called Al-Qaeda, they were called the Mujahideen, mm -hmm. yeah, with uh, uh, Bin Laden to fight the Russians over there. Hell, they, because, brought, they yeah. brought Bin Laden over here. His name was uh, Tim Osman. That was his uh, CIA cover name when he was here. He was down in Sherman Oaks in restaurants eating. I didn't know that. It's true. Tim yeah, Osman. Yeah, and then they gave they gave all our money and and the uh, all the arm armaments that they needed to the Mujahideen. Well, they were our heroes. Remember in the media, right? The yeah, heroic freedom Mujahideen. fighters, freedom yeah. fighters, they democracy. Were yes, they're yeah, going to get democracy. Fighters. And they were going to defeat, they did defeat the Russians in Afghanistan. So he was the one that got them going. And when I became a political atheist, by the way, was when Jimmy Carter came back from, uh, and I was working in D.C. at the time, uh, when he came back from Iran after spending New Year's Eve with the Shah and his wife. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and in those days, when the president came back from an overseas trip, it was a big deal, you know. He'd get off the helicopter, salute. Oh, you're right. Up. They used yeah, to cover remember that. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. And uh, he announces to the American people that the Shah was the island of stability in the Middle East. Yes. And that's when I became not only a political atheist, but that was the beginning of my trend tracking career. Because after, after you know, 
screaming mm-hmm. and yelling mm-hmm. at the television, you know, this guy's going to be overthrown, this brutal dictator who the people hated for all these years, with the Savak, the secret police, and on and on and on, and how they overthrew the democratically elected government of Mossadegh in 1953. And I'm, wa- and I'm listening to this, and then I caught myself, and I said, what will be the implications with the Shah overthrown? Mm-hmm. And I realized that gold and oil prices would go up. That was the start of it, huh? Yes. Yeah. The gold was going up because of inflation under Carter. You know, people forget Carter, you know, he fired like half his cabinet at one time. I mean, the whole thing was running away. But anyway, I didn't know what I was doing. I was a young guy. I started speculating in the market. That's when you started investing in gold. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I made enough money to quit my job. And I was, at that time... I, I was a, a government affairs specialist for the chemical industry. I used to represent Roman Haas, DuPont, a Union Carbide, Lanza, you know, a lot of the big chemical companies. And, and my job was to kill antimicrobial legislation. That was my specialty. So I was a very different guy in those days. But what, by working in that field... I mean, I was, here I am, I was at the time, you know, when I started doing this, I was 28 years old, I'm staying at the Willard Hotel and putting on meetings at mm-hmm. the Hay Adams mm-hmm. and hiring the best attorneys in town. So that's, but that's how I learned my trade. I well, was on the other that, side. Without that grounding on the other side of the fence. I would never know. No. And at 23 years old, I was yeah. the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate. Wow. And yeah, so you know, so I and I taught at St. John's. I taught American politics and campaign technology. Of course, I, of course, I also designed. So I got on the other side. You know, I didn't know what I was doing. I was a young guy, just wanted to make money. You know, and I could care less about it. You could have been a contender, Gerald. I could have been a contender. Yeah, <laughs> I, I could have been running for Wiener's spot. That's right. <laughs> Congressman I could, I could have been Gerald Salenti. You yeah. know, uh, yeah. but anyway, uh, that that's how I learned the whole trade. But anyway, going back to Jimmy Carter, and I did a Trends in the News uh, feature today, and going back after one loser president after another, Nixon, Johnson, oh, the God. Vietnam what Wars, a, that, evil, that, that piece of slime McNamara, the defense secretary, that arrogant, arrogant guy may his soul rot in hell for the death and destruction that he caused. Yeah. And Hilton. then we got Reagan, another, you know, lightweight. And then, of course, Bush, Clinton, Bush, Obama. You want to know why the country's in trouble? You don't have to be a trend forecaster. All you have to do is use your brain and put it all together, and you can see it in about six seconds. Uh, for you and I, one second. But the rest of the folks, if they can see it in six, boy, I'm more power to them. It's it's hard. We got a country now, as you well know, and we've talked many times about this, a country that is literally living in what could almost be called a, what would we call it, a, a macro Gaza Strip. Uh, they're all in debt. They're enslaved to the system. Uh, I call it, uh, people always talk about these FEMA camps. I call it camp usury. Uh, They are screwed. The average American household debt is over $24,000, I believe, in credit card debt. That's just credit card debt. doesn't count mortgages or anything else. So these people, with their student loans, the young people, and their, uh, you know, five-word sentences, if they're lucky, what kind of a future do they have? Well, they have the kind of a future that the controllers have designed for them and that they will step into and live. And they will not have anything to compare it to because when we're gone, Gerald, the younger generations will not know what kind of lives we led or what our values were, what our morals were. They don't know. They literally don't speak our language. They have no point of reference. None. They, they think huh. that the, you know, we always had Walmarts and Targets. And, and, That's the way it's always been, Depots. isn't it? Sure, of course. They don't know any better. They no. don't know what it used to be like with mom and pop stores everywhere. They don't know what it used to be like to tell a little white lie and feel bad about it and no. get in trouble for it. My God, these people lie constantly. They well, expect when you were it. Reading, when you were reading that, that quiz and you could read in between the lines the kind of words that they used. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and they were moral based. You know, this just came out on Wired Magazine. 
more than 80,000 U.S. prisoners are in solitary confinement. Really? Yes. And I wrote in the trends in trends 2000 again huh. back in actually I wrote the book in 95 through the stupidity of Warner Books and this guy Kirschbaum and and this other woman Reagan you know and I I'll say their names because they they are really scum they held up my book for a year could you imagine holding up a trend book for a year I write about trends what what uh, what do you think was her her motive. There obviously well, was a motive. Well, I know the motive was they had a she. This Reagan had a fight with my with with the woman who bought my book, uh -huh. and uh, she got fired. So she didn't want the book to be a success. That's the only thing I could imagine. And uh -huh. I have letters going back and forth. This guy Kirschbaum. Now he plays this guy that you know he he's he's found the new age. Another Slimer. All of them Slimers. Anyway, I wrote back then about the prison. Industrial complex. Oh, yeah, again, way out of the game. Way yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, here yeah. it is. That's all this is. But what the people don't realize, it's coming out of your pocket. The reason you can't make ends meet. The reason you every time you fill up your car with gas, it, it hurts you in your, in your heart and in your wallet. The reason why you can't pay off your debts, you're losing your house, and you can't pay your rent is because it's a takeover. It's the it's not only the military industrial complex, it's the cyber industrial complex. Eighty billion dollars a year to enrich these corporations to mm -hmm. watch us. Mm -hmm. the, 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 mm -hmm. the criminal and the prison industrial complex. Every sector of society has been taken over and you call it. Uh, what I forgot what you called America, usury. I camp, call it slavery. We, we live in Camp Usury, but it is slavery. It's the same it's thing. Slave Landia. Sure. There you go. That's right. what I call it. Military Industrial Congressional Prison Complex. That's it. It's Slave Landia. Hey, you yeah. want a job out of college? Maybe you could get one <laughs> in Staples. For and, 10 and bucks if you're an really hour. good, you could make it up to a store manager someday. Yeah. Yeah, with your uh, one hundred and twenty-two thousand dollars student loan still lurking in the background, it, this is all unbelievable, and it's all been set up. It didn't just happen. These people knew what they're doing. Greed it's, it's has no boundaries. Takeover. No, it's a complete takeover. It's a coup of a nation, a way of life. Uh, it is a this. We, fortunately, we remember what it was like when it was at its best. Yes. And, yep. Yep. And I have to tell you, my generation, the baby boom generation are the biggest sellouts that ever hit the planet. Everything that they said they were never going to do or be, they became they did. and did. They did. You are 100% right. Yep. Sold and, us and, out. And, and, and they have their their models right there in front of them. Hillary, Bush, uh, you know, the Clintons, the Bushes, all yeah. baby boomers, all of the lowest order possible. Doesn't get any lower. No, Gerald, no integrity, uh, no morality. Lack of conscious courage, dignity, and self-respect. I didn't have sex with that woman, Monica Lewinsky. Didn't have, didn't inhale either. <laughs> uh, you know, I was just thinking what you said. We got got to go here, but they held your book up for a year. Yeah, a year. And a that had book. to just tear you to pieces. Oh, and it still became a national bestseller. I remember. Unreal. A year. Yeah, no, that that's a crime. It is. Just a crime. All right, thank you, my friend, for being here. Uh, hey, look forward to for talking me, next month. Be well. Okay, bye bye. Night. Mr. Salente. He could have been a contender. He is a contender, and he won. All right, we'll be right back with hour two.